This problem is from the textbook Conceptual Dynamics. This is specifically example 3.3-7. The problem statement reads, a motorcycle travels in a circular path having a radius of 200 feet at a speed of 45 miles per hour. Starting from its initial speed at a location of s equals zero, the motorcycle increases its speed according to the equation v dot equals 0 0.5 times s feet per second squared, where s is in feet. Determine its speed and the magnitude of its acceleration when it has reached s equals 30 feet. So the first step in solving any problem is to read the problem statement maybe multiple times in order to really understand what's happening. It may be helpful to draw a picture to help in this process. So in this case, we know that the motorcycle travels in a circular path. I'll mark the motorcycle as being just a particle and it's moving around the circle and we're told that the circle has a radius of 200 feet. I'll use the variable rho to, to indicate radius. Once we've read this problem, feel like we understand what's going on, we would then want to identify the given information in the problem and the information that we're asked to find. So here we're told, in addition to the path being circular, that it has a radius of 200 feet. We're told that the initial speed of the motorcycle is 45 miles per hour. And that the speed changes according to this equation. So we're told how the speed changes as a function of its position along the path. So sort of imagine that s is our distance around the path. We're told initially that our initial position is 0. And then ultimately, we want to find the speed and the magnitude of the motorcycle's acceleration when the motorcycle's reached s equals 30 feet. So that's our final position. And we want to find the velocity, or more specifically, the speed. And we want to find the magnitude of the acceleration. So the acceleration is a vector, but we just want its magnitude, which we will denote with the two vertical bars. So looking at this system, you know, we want to perform a solution that will somehow take what's given and allow us to produce what is being asked for. In order to do that, we need to determine a coordinate system or define a coordinate system for our, for our problem. In this case, we're told what the path of the motorcycle is, this circle. And we're also given information about how the motorcycle travels along the path. So we're told sort of what its speed is. Um, so it's uh, velocity and the direction of the path. We're told how the speed changes, so how it accelerates along the path. And we're told um, the positions in terms of travel along the path. And so where we're given so much information about path and travel along the path, that signals to us that NT or path coordinates are a good choice for a coordinate system. So we will use nt normal tangential coordinates. And with nt coordinates, the direction of motion tangent to the path is the tangential direction. And normal to that, perpendicular to that, pointed towards the center of curvature is the normal direction. You could imagine if we were trying to solve this problem in a fixed x, y coordinate system, 
the components of the velocity and the acceleration in the x and y directions would be constantly changing in a way that's not readily given. So um, solving this problem using NT coordinates makes it much easier. Okay. Continuing on to the solution of the problem, the first thing that we're asked to determine is the final speed. So looking at what's given, we're given a lot of information about the travel along the path. And so we can sort of treat the tangential direction or the motion along the tangential direction as a rectilinear problem. So, you know, we're not moving in a straight line, but we are moving along a path that's described by a single coordinate, the, the S coordinate where the S is the distance we've traveled along the path. So we're given information about position along the path. We're given information about the initial velocity, where velocity is always tangent to the path. And the information we're given about how the speed changes is, in essence, the tangential component of acceleration. OK, and so if we think back to how we solved rectilinear problems, there were three basic kinematic equations that that we could use. Um, and there was one in particular that combined all of these things that were given. It, it has acceleration, it has velocity, and it has position. Um, and it has acceleration as a function of s, or it's suited to acceleration as a function of s, not a function of time. So if you think back, this was the equation, okay, where s is positioned along the tangential. The velocities are always in the tangential, and we'll deal with the acceleration in the tangential. And in order to solve for the velocity, you know, in order to get rid of this differential, we need to solve an integral we're told that the initial position is zero. We're told that the final position is 30 feet, but we will go ahead and solve it symbolically. We'll leave the upper limit as a variable. The velocity, we're told that the initial velocity is 45 miles per hour. And we'll leave the upper limit as a variable. Looking at these units, most of the things that we're given have length units of feet and time units of seconds. So in order to make everything consistent, we'll go ahead and convert the initial velocity from 45 miles per hour into feet per second. And that works out to be 66 feet per second if we do that units conversion. So that's our initial velocity. And since we are given the tangential acceleration as a function of s. We can substitute it straight into this integral. And since we're integrating with respect to x, we can evaluate the integral directly. So looking at the left-hand side, we can find the antiderivative of this. We add 1 to the exponent. We divide the coefficient by 2 in order to cancel the exponent when it comes down. And so 1 half divided by 2 is 1 quarter. Evaluated between 0 and s. And on the right hand side, we take the antiderivative of v, add 1 to the exponent, divide by 2, evaluate it between the lower limit and the upper limit. We substitute in the upper limit and the lower limit. On the left, we get 0.25 s squared minus 0. And on the right-hand side, we get 1 half v squared minus 1 half. 66 squared. We can solve for v. The 
So we add the 1 half 66 squared to the other side. Multiply through by 2. And then take the square root of both sides. And that simplifies. 0 0.5 s squared plus 66 squared. In general, when we take a square root, we always have a positive root and a negative root. Since we had an initial velocity that was positive and our acceleration is positive, s, s is, go, is always a positive number, so the acceleration is always positive, our final velocity has to be positive as well. So we'll take the positive root and keeping in mind all of our units, the velocity has units of feet per second. So what's ultimately asked for it's the final velocity, the velocity when s equals 30 feet. So we can determine that by taking this expression that we just found and evaluating it s equals 30. If we plug that in to this expression, punch it into our calculator, we get that the final velocity is approximately 69.33 feet per second. We could also convert that to miles per hour if we desired. And that works out to be approximately 47.27 miles per hour. So that's the answer to the first part of the question. The second thing that we're asked for is the magnitude of the acceleration at s equals 30 feet. So we'll go ahead and solve for that part of the problem. Again, we're using NT coordinates. So we can express the acceleration in terms of its tangential component and its normal component. Okay. The tangential component is essentially the, sp uh, the rate of change of the speed, how fast we're accelerating along the path v dot. The normal component is due to the changing direction of the velocity, and it's expressed by the equation v squared over rho, where rho is the radius of curvature. Okay. Looking at what we're given, we have an expression for v dot. It's 0 0.5 s. And we just found an expression for v as a function of velocity. So this is what v is equal to when we square it. We get 0 0.5 s squared plus 66 squared divided by rho. Okay. And so that is a general expression for the total acceleration, the vector acceleration in normal tangential coordinates. We specifically want to find the final acceleration. That is the acceleration when s is equal to 30. And so what we can do is we can just plug straight in for s. 0.5 times 30 is 15. So that's the component in the tangential direction. If we plug in 30 for s there, type it into our calculator, plug in 20, I'm sorry, plug in 200 for rho. That works out to be approximately 24.03, where all of the units are feet per second squared. So that's a vector expression for our acceleration at s equals 30 feet. Ultimately, we're asked for the magnitude So we can find the magnitude via the Pythagorean theorem, in essence. 
Uh, we take each of the components, square them, add them, and then take the square root. Take 15 squared plus 24.03 squared, add them, take the square root, and we get a magnitude of approximately 28.3 feet per second squared. So that answers the second part of our question and brings us to the conclusion of this example.